many people think that you need to be a finance expert or have some high level of education in order to be rich. But nothing could be further from the truth. Being rich or growing wealth is not as complicated as it seems, as long as you know the right stocks to invest in. For example, you could be rich by inventing something or being the first to develop an idea, like the big things that have changed our world like Google, Facebook and the like. Those will certainly make you rich. But not all of us are blessed with such original ideas. But you can also be rich by simply copying what other people have done to be rich. And so in this video, I'll share with you three simple assets that you can own today to make you rich. Stay with me. Hello and welcome to Daspa Careers and Investments. My name is Shadrach and in this video, I'll share with you three simple assets that you can own today to build your wealth. The first asset to hold is real estate. And here I'm referring to land, properties, homes and the like. It was the famous Ghanaian novelist, Aiko Yama, who said that the beautiful ones are not yet born because God keeps creating more. <laughs> but if there's anything God has stopped creating since the first day, it is land. Land is a scarce resource that would always be in demand. And that is why accountants consider it a non-depreciating asset. And rightly so, because with our human population growing, land will always be in demand. Since 1990, the value of lands and properties in general have increased significantly in so many places sometimes by 10 to 20 times or even more. So investing in real estate is the right thing to do. Wars have been fought because of lands. Now, think about that. And there are so many ways to make money in real estate, whether through cash flow when you lease out your land or through rental income when you rent out your property or capital gains when the value of your assets increases in price or even through equities. So these are the ways you can make money in real estate. And I know some people may say that, oh, Shadrach, for this, you need huge money to start. Well, that is true for these ones when you want to go into, say, commercial properties and the like. But there are also REITs, what is known as Real Estate Investment Trust, whereby with little money, you can invest your money in the real estate industry. And that works like mutual funds. And I'll come to that in a bit. So with the little money you have, you can give it to a company who invests in real estate and they invest the money and then you make profit on that. And these would usually invest in hotels, universities, hospitals, care homes, and the like. So you can be an investor in real estate. If you'd like to know more about how to invest in REITs, do let me know in the comments section. And remember to subscribe to this channel so that once I release that video, you don't miss out. On to the next asset, which is stocks and shares or mutual funds or index funds. Two criteria are important when it comes to any investment, and that is risk and return on investment. And one's ability to balance this out is perhaps the greatest conundrum when it comes to investment. Because the riskier investment tend to have a high return on investment, whereas the less riskier ones tend to have a lower return on investment. And it's the same when it comes to stocks. For example, growth assets like, you know, uh, technology stocks and the like tend to have a high return on investment, but they are more risky and they can fail. Whereas the value-based ones like, you know, uh, some companies and commodities tend to have a lower risk and a lower return on investment. So the question then is, how do you invest in something that is fair risk and has got a reasonable return on investment without necessarily risking all of your money? And that is where index funds or ETFs come in. Because you can have a portfolio of funds or stocks, which is a blend between, you know, value-based assets and growth-based ones. So that even if some of the companies don't do well, others will do well without necessarily losing your money. For example, the S&P 500 fund, which is, you know, the top 500 companies in America. So in the end, even if some of the companies don't do well, other companies will do well. And we know that historically, it's performed about 8 to 11% compounding interest. So that is something I personally invest in, and you can consider it also. Of course, there's no financial advice, so do invest in with caution. I've met so many people to explain to them and help them invest in the stock market. And if there's something you'd like to do, I'm happy to make an appointment with you do let me know in the comment section. There are those who would argue that Sharak, I'd rather prefer to invest in one or two companies so that once they blow, we all blow together. For example, we know that when Shaquille O'Neal invested in Google, he made huge gains because he was one of the early investors. But that can be gambling if you don't know what exactly you are doing. If you don't know your beans, you are more likely to lose because there are several companies that list and then in the end, they go you know, bankrupt and they don't make any profit. So you want to be careful. And I also feel that, you know, investing in individual companies can be stressful because you can't just invest in and forget about them. You need to follow them to see how they are performing, know when to sell your stocks and the like. But if you don't know these sort of things and you don't understand, you know, financial charts, 
then investing in index funds can be a good way to go. The OGs of investing do invest in index funds. So I simply copy what they do and then we all grow together. And finally, is cash. And I know this can be a bit controversial because of depreciation, but if you can secure your cash against a secured economy through government bonds or treasury bills, then that can be a good thing. But the emphasis here is on a stable economy. Because we know what happened in Greece, where they defaulted on their bonds. The IMF and other international agencies had to bail them out. And so people lost a lot of their money. Or even in Ghana, where you know the government is defaulting on their bonds. So that can be a risky thing. So the country or the currency that you invest in or you save in matters. There is a good reason why a lot of people invest or save their money in Swiss banks. The Nigerians will tell you that when Abacha you know, sold the millions of Naira, he started it in you know, Swiss economies for reasons because it is a fairly stable economy and they've got good financial systems. So that can be a good thing against government bonds or treasury bills. Of course, you need to check the rates or uh, the return on investment because you want to make sure that it is you know, balancing out inflation and that you're not losing the value of the money. Here in the UK, you can secure your money against the NSNI bonds. And I'll do a video to explain exactly how that works. But if you have less than £85,000, then you can find a high interest paying account to save your money in there. Because the FCSE protection means that anything under £85,000 will be refunded by the government if the company you put your money goes bust. So it is as secure as the government. And I think the UK is a fairly stable place to invest your money. Of course, you need to be aware that this is the company groups. So, for example, we know that Halifax and Bank of Scotland is the same group of companies. So, 85,000 between these two companies. So, if you've got more than 85,000, then you want to make sure that these are different company groups so that, you know, you don't keep 85,000 in, in Halifax, 85,000 in, uh, in Bank of Scotland because essentially it's the same group of companies. So, you can find different companies to secure your money. Now, some concluding thoughts. I know some people may ask, Sharak, in what proportion should I you know, invest in these real estate, stocks and shares and cash? And for that, I'll say it depends on your circumstance. For example, if you are near retirement, then I'll say reduce your exposure in the stocks and shares market because it can be volatile, particularly if you cannot hold it for the long term. But if you are fairly young and you've got longevity in your favor, then you can look at the stock market as well as even real estate because we know in the long term, they do a lot better than cash. So really, it depends on your circumstance. You may also be aware of other things you can invest your money in. For example, commodities like gold, oil, you know, investing in these assets. But for these things, I did not talk about them in this video because you must know your beans. If no, somebody will sell you something glittering or something shiny as gold if you don't know it. Let me know in the comment section if there are other ways you know you can secure your money or you can build wealth that I've not spoken about. Um, I'll do a video where I explain other businesses that are secure ways of building wealth. But until that video, God bless.